Baldwin Locomotive Works built four locomotives between 1914 and 1916 that should never have existed. 24 driving wheels, six cylinders, over 160,000 pounds of tractive effort, more than a big boy, more than an Allegheny, more than anything on rails before or since. The Erie Railroad named their first one after Matt H. Shea, a respected engineer who had spent decades working the Erie's toughest mountain grades. Contemporary writers claimed the triplex could haul 640 freight cars. Baldwin marketed it as a breakthrough for helper service. The engineering looked flawless. Every single one failed. Not from accidents, not from explosions. The triplex killed itself through design, a machine so fundamentally flawed that running it at normal speeds would starve it of steam, choke its own fire, and risk breaking the couplers and draft gear of the trains it was built to move. The Virginian Railway's example lasted four years before Baldwin took it back and cut it into two separate locomotives. The Erie's three units operated for 13 years as slow-speed pushers before 2102 locomotives, half their size, replaced them entirely. By 1933, every triplex had been scrapped. None were saved. Here is why Baldwin's most powerful design became their greatest failure. The Concept George Henderson held the patent. The idea was brutal in its simplicity. Take a mallet articulated locomotive, add a third set of drivers under the tender, and use the tender's weight for adhesion. Three engine sets, one boiler, maximum tractive effort for banking trains over mountain grades. The Erie Railroad operated steep grades around Gulf Summit and Susquehanna Hill in southern New York. They needed power. Henderson's design promised 176,000 pounds of starting tractive effort in compound mode. Those numbers made every other locomotive look inadequate. Baldwin built the first unit in April 1914. Number 2603, later renumbered 5014, carried Matt H. Shea's name on its cab. Two more followed in 1916 for the Erie. The Virginian Railway, moving massive coal trains through the West Virginia mountains, ordered their own version. A 28884 numbered 700 classified XA as experimental. The compound system looked elegant. High-pressure steam hit the center cylinders. Exhaust from those fed the front and rear low-pressure cylinders. All six cylinders measured the same diameter, 36 inches on the Erie units, 34 inches on the Virginian. This made them true two-to-one compounds, not the typical mallet arrangement with smaller high-pressure cylinders. Testing showed staggering numbers. Baldwin engineers watched the triplex generate force that literally exceeded what freight car couplers and frames could withstand. Then they tried running it. Six cylinders demand steam, lots of steam. The problem was simple. Baldwin had built a boiler size for a normal articulated locomotive, then asked it to feed three sets of cylinders instead of two. Contemporary steam engineering practice suggested that high-power locomotives needed roughly 20 to 30 square feet of great area per driving axle. The Erie Triplex had 24 drivers. It managed barely 7 square feet per axle. Running above 10 miles per hour caused steam pressure to drop faster than the boiler could recover. Engineers would open the throttle, feel the locomotive surge forward, then watch steam pressure collapse as six massive pistons sucked every available molecule from the barrel. The Virginian XA performed worse. Maximum sustainable speed was 5 miles per hour. Some sources claim it managed 3 miles per hour. Baldwin sent personnel to stay with the locomotive during trials, desperately trying to solve the steam starvation. They failed. Every attempt to increase speed meant the cylinders consumed steam faster than the firebox could generate it. The locomotive would stumble, lose power, and force the crew to throttle back or risk complete pressure loss. The Exhaust Problem Only half the triplex's exhaust went where it needed to go. Front cylinders exhausted through the smoke box, creating draft that pulled combustion gases through the firebox and heated the boiler, standard practice. But the rear cylinders, mounted under the tender, exhausted through a feed water heater and then straight to atmosphere through a large pipe. That exhausted nothing for the fire. No draft. No contribution to boiler heating. Wasted. With only 50% of the exhaust creating draft, the firebox couldn't maintain the intense combustion needed to feed six hungry cylinders. 
Firemen shoveled coal desperately, trying to compensate. The fire struggled. Steam production lagged. The cycle continued. Engineers on the Virginian reported tunnel passages where only four inches of clearance existed between the locomotive and tunnel walls. With steam leaking from cylinder stuffing boxes and exhaust pouring from both ends, crews worked in conditions one contemporary source called the conditions hell on earth. Mechanical stress. The tractive effort numbers looked incredible on paper. In practice, they created problems Baldwin had not anticipated. Freight car couplers in 1914 could not handle 160,000 pounds of starting force. Neither could draft gear. Neither could car frames. When the triplex tried to move a heavy train from a standing start, something would break. And it was not the locomotive. Erie relegated their units to pusher service exclusively. They would shove trains up Gulf Summit and Susquehanna Hill from behind, where coupler stress was distributed across multiple locomotives. Even there, crews had to manage the throttle carefully to avoid damaging the cars. The tender engine created another issue, variable adhesion. As coal and water depleted, weight on those rear drivers decreased. Less weight meant less grip. In theory, this should have caused problems. Baldwin had compensated by adjusting steam lap. The rear engine was designed to produce less adhesion than the front and middle sets. Even nearly empty, it maintained equivalent tractive effort. But that compensation came at a cost. Complexity. More valves, more adjustment, more maintenance on an already massive machine. The Virginian Disaster. Number 700 never made a successful trip. Contemporary accounts use that exact phrase. Baldwin delivered the locomotive in November 1916. The Virginian put it to work on the Elmore to Clark's Gap section. 14 miles long, including 12 miles of continuous 2.07% grade, with 10 curves of 12 degrees. The XA could not handle it. Maximum speed was 5 miles per hour on level track, and it was slower on grades. Steam starvation hit constantly. The locomotive would start a push, begin losing steam pressure, and slow to a crawl as the boiler struggled to recover. In 1920, after roughly four years of attempting to make it work, the Virginian sent 700 back to Baldwin. The builders dismantled it completely, salvaging what they could. The frame was rebuilt into a 2880 wheel arrangement, numbered 610, and classified AF. The tender was converted into a 282, numbered 410, and classified MD. Both of those rebuilt locomotives operated until 1953, nearly 35 years. The triplex they came from lasted four years. Why Erie kept theirs longer? The Erie units worked, barely, in their extremely limited role. As pushers on Gulf Summit, operating at walking speed for short distances, they could function. Barely sustainable steam production at 10 miles per hour was adequate for shoving trains up a grade, then coasting back down for the next assignment. But they were maintenance nightmares. They were so large that certain repairs required sending them to Lehigh Valley shops at Sayre, Pennsylvania, because Erie's own Dunmore facility could not handle them. Every component was oversized, custom-built, and difficult to service. In 1927, Erie began receiving new 284 Berkshires from Alco and Lima. These modern locomotives freed up older 2102s for helper service. The 2102s could do everything the triplexes did and do it at normal speeds with normal maintenance requirements. Erie scrapped number 5014 in October 1929. Number 5016 followed in March 1930. The last one, number 5015, lasted until February 1933. 13 years of service, no preservation, no sentiment, just scrap value. The Deadly Truth the triplex was deadly because it represented everything wrong with brute force engineering. Baldwin looked at tractive effort numbers and assumed more cylinders meant more power. They ignored steam generation limits. They dismissed exhaust draft physics. They built a machine that could theoretically haul anything, but practically haul nothing at useful speeds. Running a triplex meant constantly fighting its own design. Steam starvation created power surges and drops that stressed every component. Poor draft meant overworked firemen and underperforming boilers. Excessive tractive effort meant damaged freight cars. The entire concept was fundamentally broken. 
there are no documented fatal accidents, boiler explosions, or catastrophic derailments involving any of the triplex locomotives. But the design killed itself, economically, mechanically, and operationally. Four locomotives were built, four locomotives were scrapped, zero survivors, zero success stories. Later, Baldwin duplex experiments like the PRR Q2 and T1 showed that the company moved away from extreme multi-engine concepts and the triplex failure almost certainly influenced that shift. They understood, more cylinders only work if you can feed them steam. The triplex proved that on paper and in practice, some ideas are deadly from conception. 